All right, so if you haven't yet now, please mute, mute your microphone for our guest speaker. Stephen Glaus, uh, go ahead, introduction, please, Glenn. Yeah, Stephen reached out to us, um, which was great. He's a local E-Town resident, looking to get engaged in our local community, hopes to make a positive impact. He was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 2018, and he's, uh, he wants to talk to us about maybe his journey there and also about the MS Fitness Challenge. Uh, which we know a lot about, um, but I'm, we're running out of time, so I want to give it all to him. Go ahead, Stephen. Yeah, hello, everybody. Thank, just so thankful to be out the chance to be able to talk to you today. I know it's a virtual format, but we're all making it work, right? <laughs> so I'll try to make this as brief as possible just to sort of sh share my story about how I went from basically graduating high school to going straight to boot camp with the military, joining the Army, to where I am today. It's a pretty... It's been a roller coaster ride, a lot of ups and downs. But as I said, I essentially, right out of high school, not even like two weeks after I graduated in June of 2009, I was out for basic training. I joined the Army, went to Fort Jackson for my basic training. And I spent about three and a half years in the military, got to deploy to Iraq. I was a drone pilot, so I flew Amin aerial systems for the Army. And I also did a deployment in 2015 as a contractor for North of Grumman and spent about 15 months in Afghanistan. Uh, I'm married. I've got a, my wife and I've got my daughter who's about eight, about to turn nine. And my son, he just turned two yesterday. So it was his birthday. So <laughs> it's a lot of fun. We're a busy family. But in about 2018, my life kind of was completely flipped upside down. Uh, I, I had recently taken a position with a company in California. I had just finished my master's degree. I actually finished my master's in business while I was in Afghanistan through online school. And thanks to that degree, I was able to land a really awesome job with a company in California called Swift Engineering. And they were developing this really incredible drone that was, had the capabilities to take off vertically, rotate to horizontal flight. And they wanted me to be one of their first test slash sales pilot for the company. So I got to take an awesome business trip out to Japan to sell this drone to the Japanese government. But while I was in Japan, I noticed my left foot went completely numb to the point like I couldn't feel it. I could literally like stab it with a knife and there was nothing. So I kind of laughed it off as just something, you know, maybe a pinched nerve or my body just being weird. But when I returned from my trip back, back from Japan, that's when in a matter of three weeks, my health condition kind of took a precipitous plummet. In just about three weeks, I went from being a relatively healthy guy to running 5Ks to doing all this fun stuff to not being able to walk. I could barely walk with a cane, uh, barely being able to see. My vision was going double and blurry. It looked like I was looking underwater. And I was even wetting the bed every night. I lost full control of my bladder. I couldn't even, I had to carry like a water bottle around me, almost wet myself while I was driving. So, Realizing at that point that my life was never going to be the same. I, I got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and doctors were pretty confident that it looked like I was probably well on my way to probably being in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. So at this point, I'm only 28. My son's just about to be born in about five days. And I'm about to lose my job because I can no longer perform the duties. And my family's going to have to move all the way back to the Northeast. And I was desperate, just clawing for answers, clawing for a solution, just desperate for a cure. So I started digging into every resource that was fathomable <laughs> through Google, through what you name it. I was, I was there, I was looking. And I came across this book called David's Goliath. And it's written by this, game, this guy named David Lyons. And he shares this story. He's a, he's a former amateur level bodybuilder who at about the age of 50, he was getting into Hollywood doing some TV series shows for them doing different pitches and about the age of 50 he was also diagnosed with multiple sclerosis and he kind of got the same prognosis being told that hey look you're probably gonna be in a wheelchair for the rest of your life but he said you don't know how big my God is so he decided to take that diagnosis and use it as a challenge for him to get back into bodybuilding and pursue fitness as sort of his avenue to find restoration and healing for his body so in about a matter of two years, he actually trained for a national level bodybuilding competition and won the most inspirational trophy award from that. He also got some accolades from Arnold Schwarzenegger and he was able to actually get a fitness life achievement award from Arnold himself. And 
it was at that moment that his wife, his wife's name is Kendra, she challenged him. She said, David, all these things you're doing, they're really great. It's good for you, but you keep talking about you want to do this, you want to do this next bodybuilding competition. What about all the people out there in the world that have MS? Why not try and find a way to help them? And that's exactly what he did. So his wife and him, they got together and they started what's called the MS Fitness Challenge. And it's an organization that helps people through coaching, through fitness, through diet, nutrition, and exercise to, to gain a footing, a footing and a foundation to grow upon and actually start getting, gaining traction and actually tackling this disease and actually getting better. So I remember I finished reading his book and I, I felt so compelled, so inspired that I wanted to get a hold of him. So there was this little contact us page in the back of the book. Mind you, this book's like eight years old already. But I figured, you know what? I'm going to send an email. Just like this, how much I appreciate this. I sent the email, and even I'd say five minutes later, it was. It just so happened to be David was checking that email for the first time in over a year. He was looking at it when I sent him this email. So he responded to me immediately. The next day, we got on the phone together, and after talking it out and sharing our stories, he asked if I wanted to work with him. So. In about two and a half months, I got certified as a personal trainer with a special certification in training people with multiple sclerosis. And I also decided to, to do something crazy and actually start training for an Ironman triathlon. So for about the past 15 months or so, maybe 16 now, I've been training for an Ironman, which I was supposed to do next month in September in Maryland, but unfortunately it's been canceled. But uh, I plan on actually doing a virtual full Ironman here in Lancaster County in October. So I'm still going to be doing a full Ironman in support of the MS Fitness Challenge and trying to inspire hope and just raise awareness for what's going on. So it has been such an incredible journey. I mean, there, along the way, I've, I've had several relapses back maybe in uh, February of this year. I was in the hospital again with my vision. And it's been just a battle every day between my mind and my body, but thanks to just consistent prayer, consistent motivation and encouragement from my support network, my family, from all the people around me and the communities that I serve and that I'm, I'm, I participate in, uh, I'd like to say that I'm, I'm sort of kicking MS in the teeth. Like I, I'm at the point where I'm ready to do what very few people on this, I think there's maybe four other people in the world with MS that have ever finished an Ironman. And it's something that, uh, I'm, I just feel blessed to even have a chance to be a part of. So my hope is to inspire other people. And I know that there's people local in this area that have multiple sclerosis. I know there's people local in this area that this, this goes beyond MS that are dealing with a significant health diagnosis, whether it be cancer, whether it be some terrible disease. But there's also all of us can relate to the fact that we are all, I'm pointing at each and every one of you, we are all going to face trials, adversity, and suffering in this life. And when those things happen, you have two choices. You can either push forward or wave the white flag of surrender, fall back, and just fall victim to what's going to happen. So my encouragement to everybody today, if you take nothing else from what I'm talking about my, my introduction, my speech today, is make that decision now for whenever that does happen, for whatever battle does arise, wherever, whenever your Goliath rises up, that you're ready to fight. Thank you guys so much. Stephen, thanks. That was good. Very inspirational. Does anybody have any questions for Stephen? I have a question. Yeah. Right. Um, so somebody I know was recently diagnosed with MS. Do you have contact information? I'm not sure yet how to bridge the contact, but I'd like to at least consider it. Um, I, I think it could be extremely helpful them to be able to reach out to you if you're open to that yeah i'd be 100 percent open i mean I'm, I'm now the director of fitness for the ms fitness challenge so i serve as like the secondary leader of the whole organization developing the training programs and i always love just being there as just an interactive resource to be with people and because it's i mean it sucks when you get diagnosed with ms it's a it's a life-changing sort of diagnosis and there's a lot of negativity associated attached to that where the majority of people are told you're, you're basically on a progressive downward decline for the rest of your life. But we try to speak hope and up, 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 uplifting encouragement to people as opposed to, to what the medical community often says. So yeah, I, would de I, could, I can definitely share those resources, would be happy to, maybe uh, I can get with Donald or with uh, Glenn and I could share via email and you guys can distribute that. 
Thank you. Steve, I have a question. Yeah. Um, you're a vet, and is the VA providing any uh, medical assistance to you, especially with your vision issues? So that's the wonderful thing. Uh, the VA actually, in the past, I'd say 14 years or so, they've uh, a lot of research has been done, and they determined that veterans who have been deployed to the Middle East, so you're talking about Kuwait, Iraq, Afghanistan, any, any military personnel that have been deployed to those areas come back and they still don't know the reason why, but they come back with a 400% higher likelihood of developing multiple sclerosis than the average population. So because of that, they have now sort of retroactively are awarding veterans who get diagnosed within five years of being separated. Being di and they're, they're awarding veterans with uh, basically VA benefits. So I have been able to get disability benefit claims from my MS through the VA. So I'm, I'm actually 100% covered through them. Okay. What sort of vision issues do you have? So my vision is called a diplopia. And it's essentially my eyes will, when I sort of lose control of them, they'll go cross-eyed without me actually doing anything. I'll just lose control of my pupils. And basically it, everything goes double. And then if I get really fatigued, it starts to look like I'm looking underwater at the same time. So I basically am just like swimming around with my hands because I can't really see anything. Okay. Uh, I, I think you might know that I have vision issues also. And uh, I'm currently um, evaluating a new electronic eye system for okay. the VA. Okay. And um, they just upgraded me with the newest uh, version that was uh, started distribution August the 1st. So I'm, I'm like two weeks into trying to master this thing. And it's, it's, it's fantastic piece of equipment um, and you might want to check with the visor people at the VA to see if, you know, you can qualify for it too. Awesome. I appreciate that. Any, any other questions? Stephen, uh, could you uh, list several things that you've done? What specifically is the program for exercise? I mean, how did you start? What did they say that you should do? What made the difference? initially that you said this is working in terms of nutrition but especially whatever the exercise is what what practical things did you actually do that that was good right so i'd say the, the two biggest factors for me would definitely have to be my diet and nutrition as well as just i'll just say exercise and and multiple sclerosis it kind of is almost like counterintuitive. And I'll give you an example. When I was especially early on into my diagnosis, my, my wife, she's actually a group fitness instructor and she teaches a class that's called Les Mills Body Pump. And it's like a high endurance uh, muscle strength class where you do a lot of repetitions of the whole, bo a whole body workout. And every time I'd walk into that class, walking in, stumbling in with my cane, I know that, that for the next 60 minutes, my life is basically going to be hell. It's going to suck. And I'm going to, my legs are going to be wobbling. I'm going to be under immense pain and it's going to feel like there's fire in my legs. But the more that I, the more that I kept going at it, the more that I put my body under that pressure that I kept. And what we kind of try to teach and, and promote within the MS Fitness Challenge is about restoring the mind to the muscle body connection. The more that you can get your brain firing and focused and engaged in the muscles that are struggling, the, the brain actually has the capability of, rewiring and creating new network connections to create the same different tasks that it used to be able to do. So that's essentially what you're trying to force your brain to do when you're still, when you're working out with MS is to create those new fiber, the, the, those new neur neuron networks so that your body can do the same functions. And it just, it takes, it's, there's no overnight like miraculous cure. Like I, I'm, I'm on a full autoimmune diet. So that means I've taken, I'm on, an all vegan diet, I'm um, gluten free diet, basically all whole foods, and and it's a very strict diet where I don't eat any processed foods. I minimize sugars, and a lot of people would, would say that it, the diet that I eat sounds like torture itself. But for me, it boils down when it comes to the decision of whether or not I'm going to be there to be an engaged and an active father and husband and leader in my community, or if I'm going to enjoy myself a little scoop of ice cream just for my my own <laughs> very 
instant gratification, small like minute satisfaction, I'm going to take the long-term reward every day, every single time. That, that those small setbacks in the long run, they're not worth it to me and, and all the progress that I've made. So moving forward with, with being able to get to the point where I am today, it's just, it's all about consistency. I think consistency is, is the biggest key ingredient to success when you're living with MS is to continue moving forward and, and never looking back and, and just staying focused and, and not getting discouraged when things go bad. Cause I've had a few relapses and it can be really discouraging, especially after I've made all this progress to, to fall back again for no fault of my own, but to always keep getting back up, keep fighting, keep pressing, keep striving. And so I'd say definitely it's the, it's the diet and nutrition. I started changing those two things and started no, noticing immediate uh, results, uh, better, better energy, uh, better just daily functions of different body movements. But then as the more that I continue to exercise, the, the worst, the, the, the really bad side effects of like the numbness and the trouble walking and the, and the blurry vision that usually was included with those things, they all started to subside. And I'm now at the point where I can actually run a good 13 miles. I, I can bike 115 miles. And sure, my legs are going to feel like that they're, you know, that feels like there's lead weights and then they get really numb, but my vision doesn't go all blurry and I can still manage to walk after doing those things. So every single time I go out there and exercise, it's, it always gets difficult, but later on it gets better. So it's, it's keeping that long-term game in effect. I just have a comment. Uh, Dave Hallowell is a uh, program at, at uh, Hershey Hospital. Uh, Dr. Charles Duffy, who's a neurologist, he's just looking for people who have, I'd say at this point, the kind of story that you bring, and perhaps uh, there might be a connection that would be valuable to you and to the efforts of this guy up there. He's spoken at Masonic Village, so. Yeah, yeah I'd be happy to share my story. I mean, I... I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say it, but like my story, it's impossible without God. Like I give him first and full credit for where I'm at today because it really, when you look at, I mean, I was unrecognizable two years ago to where I am today. Like you, to, to do what I'm doing and be where I'm at today, you, I would have laughed at myself had you told me, oh, by the way, you'd be, you're going to be doing an Ironman in about two years. You got this. Like it just doesn't Amazing. make sense. So thank you. I have a comment. Uh, you know, Stephen, I can't necessarily speak on behalf of the entirety of, you know, the Rotary Club uh, here in Elizabethtown, but uh, I have two brothers in the service. Uh, one uh, had three tours in Kuwait, and one just actually got back uh, like a week or so ago from uh, the country of Jordan for six months. Right. Uh, and so, you know, I appreciate all that you've done for the country. Uh, God bless you. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, it's I, I would do it again in a heartbeat. It was, it was my honor and privilege to be able to serve, so. Any last question? Okay, if great not. Program. Yeah, go, go ahead, Dave. It's just a great program and I credit people for coming forward. Yeah, and so that, one last mention, uh, the MS Fitness Challenge, I've actually Last September, I did a 12-week fitness challenge at Spooky Nook Sports. You guys are probably familiar with the large sports complex there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I raised some local funds to be able to do 12 weeks of personal training for six people in our local area that have MS. And I did one-on-week -week weekly training with them at Spooky Nook Sports facility. So when these COVID restrictions sort of taper down and everything sort of maybe gets back to normal, I plan on doing that again. So I would love to maybe get your guys, garner your support to just try and raise awareness and get people, hopefully in Elizabethtown, uh, who have multiple sclerosis, just get them aware of what's, I mean, it's a totally free program where I work with them for, they get a free access to Speaking Next Sports for three months and I, they get one-on-one -on -one training with me. So it's a, it's a win-win all the way around. Steven, my email, I sent that to you in the chat. I don't okay. know if you can grab that before you uh, pop right. out. But uh, any last question? We have another I minute. Just, I just want to say you are, such an inspiration. I don't have MS and I can't do half of the stuff you're doing. Well, I probably could. Maybe. Yeah, we're going to sign you up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sign me up. No, but you are an inspiration. And God bless. 
this will probably be the weirdest thing you'll hear me say, but I think multiple sclerosis is the best thing that's ever happened to me. It was, it was my wake up call in life and my chance to amplify Christ through my, through my weakness and just show the world just how strong God can be. So thank you guys. Well, Stephen, you're truly a hero, a local hero. Um, Roger, it's awesome to hear about your new vision technology and what that could mean for Stephen down the road or, or, or now. Uh, but Stephen, we so appreciate your willingness to share your story, your inspiration. Oh, man. And um, also for uh, that uh, amazing, the concepts you're talking about with brain overcoming the re rewiring and so on, but also for cheering us on for our current and future challenges. Mm -hmm. So everybody have a victorious and enjoyable weekend. Take Thank care. Thank you, Don. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks. Thank you.